Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Mark's. Today is this uh, commemoration of the Reformation of the Church. Very glad that we have you all here today. Just a couple of announcements. We have Sunday School and Confirmation after worship today. Uh, Thursday is Halloween already, the last day of the month. Friday is November. Yeah, time flies. Um, so there is the trick-or-treat downtown, uh, the tavern and hot dog meal at the, co- uh, at the community center. Uh, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. If you haven't already filled out your red um, insert in there for names that you would like remembered uh, next Sunday, please put it in the basket in the back. You can always call me or Michaela during the week as well if you want to add a name. Uh, I would like maybe two more people to serve on my sabbatical planning committee. Um, I'd like to get started on some of my own planning this week. So if anyone would like to be part of that, because I'll be gone for a while and you get to run the asylum. Are there any other announcements? Oh, Ro- yes, Rotan Pancake Feed and Gary. Community youth group will be service training for mission on Wednesday night between 6.30 and 7.30. Uh, please turn your lights on Cool. Thank you, Gary. Any other announcements? If you're able, please stand, face the rear of the sanctuary for our processional hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Child or spouse, the 
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways. Teach us your paths and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. You may turn to page 175 in your hymnal to follow along with the liturgy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord, have mercy on us, O oh Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us, O oh Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us, O oh Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy on us, O oh Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy on us, O oh Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy on us, O oh Lord have mercy. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God on high. Gloria, 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 glory to God on high. And on earth, peace to God's people, glory to God. And on earth, peace to God's people, glory to God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we pray for your only holy Catholic and apostolic church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Jeremiah. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, 
and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm of the day is Psalm 46. Let us read it responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. Nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought forth upon the earth. Behold the one who makes wars to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and turns the shield with fire. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Our second reading comes from Romans 3, a chapter from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth will be silent and the whole world will be made accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, by the faith, the law of faith. For we hold that person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. 
The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Savior Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. What hymn is associated with Reformation Sunday? A Mighty Fortress. Words and music written by Martin Luther based on Psalm 46, our psalm for today. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, writes the psalmist. Ein feste Burg ist unser Gott, ein guter Wehr und Waffen, wrote Luther. Literal translation into English would be, a strong fortress is our God, a good defense and weapon. And we sang in the hymn, a mighty fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. Now, Luther wrote the words to the hymn after a long period of severe depression and ill health which included the plague ravaging Wittenberg. Words of hope in the midst of chaos, despair, and grief. God is to be our refuge and our strength, our fortress in times of trouble. Our fortress, our rock on which everything stands. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus asks his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Simon answers, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now inscribed in the dome of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome is, Tu es Petrus, you are Peter, in Latin. By the way, Peter means rock. Peter is considered to be the first pope. The rock on whom the church is built. Now, scholars have debated on whether the church, the ecclesia, the assembly of believers, was established on Peter himself or Peter's statement of faith. I believe Christ is saying the rock on which the church is built is not Peter himself, but Peter's faith. His faith, his trust that Jesus is the Son of the living God is the rock on which the church stands. The rock in which we seek refuge, our mighty fortress. And because of Peter's declaration, Jesus says to him, I give you the keys to heaven. So what are these keys? And what does one do with them? Well, keys allow access. And in this case, it is the kingdom of heaven. And because of sin, the doors to the kingdom of heaven have been closed to us. God, through Christ, gives us the church keys, access to God's kingdom of heaven. Now, these keys are found in the, in the means of grace, the means by which we receive God's grace. And one of the keys is known as absolution. When I declare your sins have been forgiven, that's absolution. I have been called by God in the church to use that key. And when I tell you that you are forgiven, I declare the kingdom of heaven is open to you. That's all it takes. A declaration of forgiveness from God through me. Now, in Luther's time, the key wasn't free. One paid the church to have your sins forgiven. Luther believed the church was abusing its authority. It was holding poor people hostage by making them pay for salvation. Actually, they were paying for the new St. Peter's Basilica. The church was profiting from God's free gift of grace, salvation, and mercy, and the church was misusing its power and influence on the common folk. Another key is the Lord's Supper. 
We come together to receive forgiveness through the body and blood of Christ in, with, and under the bread and wine. And we come together to be in the true presence of Christ, to eat and drink together, to experience a foretaste of the eternal feast that is to come. This is another key of the free gift of grace. Luther also believed the church was abusing this key. The cup was withheld from the congregation. Only priests at that time were allowed to drink the wine and blood of Christ. And this put priests on a higher status than lay people. The words of institution were whispered by the priest with his back to the congregation. Words of institution are on the night in which he was betrayed, or again after supper he took a cup. They were whispered. These words were so powerful, so holy, that a low, lowly lay person had no business hearing it. Luther advocated for both the bread and cup to be given to the laity. And after all, Jesus says, take and drink, all of you. Not some, but all. As for the words of institution, they are to be publicly spoken and chanted facing the congregation, never omitted, so that all who hear will be inspired and comforted to know that this is for you. Luther's influence influenced the entire church, and you will see this change today. Luther wanted to ensure the church is properly using the keys given by Christ. He believed the church needed a reformation, and unfortunately, the church split. That's why I don't really celebrate the reformation. I just commemorate that it happened. And we're doing better. Not perfect, but we are doing better. But there's good news in all of this. There's the good news of God's loving forgiveness and saving love. It's not just for the elite, for a certain race, a certain gender, a certain group of people in power. The keys can be used to open and free, but they can also be used to bind and deny. So how are we using the keys given to us by Christ? Are keys being used to open? Or are we holding on to keys so access can be denied? God's grace is extravagant and overflowing. It is at the heart of our Lutheran confessions. The free gift of God's forgiveness is at the center of our worship. It is the basis for our praise. Gesundheit. Yeah, that's one of my fears is I'm just going to sneeze. Maybe I need a sneeze guard up front. Daniel Erlander writes, Forgiveness is free, period. Take it, use it, trust it. It belongs to you. It is the well that was drawn. The well it is drawn from will never dry, is what I meant. The keys first given to Peter and his companions free us from all that bind us, restrict us, and sadden us. So how can we not free others as we have been freed? God surprises us with this amazing grace. Now it is our turn to do it for others. When we do this, we continue the reformation of the church and of the world. Amen. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness. Comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, 
offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Jesus gave the mandate, share the good news, that he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Let none be forgotten throughout the world. In the triune name of God, go and baptize. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people, that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for this year's harvest. Bless and keep safe all the who work in the fields, operate the machinery, and transport the crops. May we feed the world as you feed us. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations, especially Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza, where they are in an uproar, bringing wise, bring wise, wise leadership and comfort to those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis, especially Vicki Achenbach, 
Vicki. Sue Wackenbach. Sue. Ruth Ann Grimm. Ruth Ann. Jean Schroeder. Jean. Patrick Kester. Patrick. Fern Schlautman. Fern. Gary Broders. Gary. Laura Jean Hagee. Laura Jean. Aaron Warrior. Aaron. And the Shoemaker family. Shoemaker family. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless who are preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word and give them courage to proclaim their faith. We also pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Rose Koth. Rose. Mary Trinhale. Mary. Alicia Schroeder. Alicia. Reese McFarlane. Reese. Joe Cordes. Joe. Nick Ekman. Nick. Leon Gieselman. Leanne. Norman McAprang. Norman. And Eleanor Schleisner. Eleanor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of peace with those around you. just in case. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church and earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, might and power, holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of might and power, holy is the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna here on earth. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We give you thanks, Father. Through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim us to your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. And there he took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust in you. He is the one handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, 
and to show forth the resurrection. He took bread, gave you thanks, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took a cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, give you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church and gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come now to the banquet, for all is ready. Christ given for you. Body of 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 Christ given for you.
harvest comes to feed the hungry. The world cries out to taste the goodness of the Lord. For many are we, and broken we've come, but we shall become one. Your harvest, Lord, is gathered in. We stand before you to be your bread, to be your body in the world. For many are we, and broken we've come, but we shall become one. For many are we, and broken we've come, but we shall become one. We shall be one. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path, that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you, now and forever. Amen. May the God of heaven and earth shower his grace and favor upon you. May he always send his holy angels to minister you in the times of need. And may you stand with the saints and all the angels of heaven before Christ's eternal throne. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.